This video is on drop shotting and it is going to take you through how to rig up a small mouth drop shot rig which will work great on the Great Lakes, Erie, Ontario, uh, some bigger inland lakes like Simcoe and basically anywhere where there's small mouth. It works for a multi-species and I'm going to show you how to do the small mouth setup of the drop shot rig and I'll do that pretty up close and then I'm going to take it a little further back and, and do a perch rig which is a version of a drop shot rig just so you can see a little different perspective and how they are both tied. This video will take you through a number of different phases of drop shotting. It's going to show you my drop shot box, uh, not baits but uh, the weights and snaps and swivels and how I use all of those. It's going to take you through how I do some advanced drop shot rigging before I go, especially if I have people that I'm taking out or I have a tournament coming up and I know I'm going to be drop shotting a lot and I want to save some time. So there's a multiple variety of tips in this and this is the second in my playlist of Fishing 101. And the first one was on understanding fishing lines and my two go-to fishing knots. And it's really important that you understand those go-to fishing knots because you are going to need those if you want to set up your drop shot rods like mine. So I highly encourage you to watch that other video prior to watching this one as you will find when I am referring to Palomar knots especially if you've practiced a little bit, that you're going to understand it much better. This will also be the second video in the drop shot playlist on my channel. The first one was on how to make drop shot weights, and that was pretty cool too. You might want to check that out if you want to have a good supply of drop shot weights like I do, especially in these times of a pandemic where it's pretty tough to find supply if you do it yourself, you will have what you want when you want. And that's been, you know, my motto through that lure making custom tackle playlist as well. I encourage you to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss any of the upcoming episodes in various playlists. For example, this is on drop shotting. I am hoping to do some on the water footage this summer and that will be the summary of the drop shot where you actually get to see it in action and I'll go over a few various techniques as to how to work a drop shot and that should be pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to doing that one and hopefully you will too. So if you get a chance, a like, share or subscribe is always very much appreciated and I hope you enjoy the rest of the video. Here are the key components to a drop shot rig. First of all, your fluorocarbon line, and I use eight pound test for my smallmouth fishing almost exclusively. I will go down lighter line if necessary, but generally speaking, eight pound test is an all around great choice. Down here is a small rainbow trout swivel, and it is a blackbird swivel. From what I remember, I buy them in the bulk, so I don't need to get them very often and they will stop your bait from spinning which will look unnatural to the fish. A snap is going to be used on the end so that you do not need to worry about cutting off line to change baits. It's a quick and easy efficient way. I gave you a sneak preview of that in the earlier video on how to make drop shot weights. This is a Berkley Fusion 19 hook and it is the drop shot hook. The best sizes are one, two, or one knot. Those are typically the main sizes for drop shotting and a variety of drop shot weights. And as we mentioned earlier in our pouring video that we prefer the eye. So if you haven't checked out that video, please do so and you will see why we prefer that. It is important when you are drop shotting to have a variety of fluorocarbon lines I have my Trilene 100% fluorocarbon stored in this little container and you can see that I have four here 
six pound test, eight, 10, 12, and 15 pound test. And that'll match pretty much any condition I'm facing. Obviously, if it's really clear water, I'm gonna to stick towards the lighter lines. If I'm in dirtier water, then I can get away with some of the heavier lines without sacrificing the number of bites. So adjust the line to the conditions you are facing. This is an important reminder of the earlier video on my channel that was understanding fishing lines and my go-to knots. You need to have a clear understanding of why you're using fluorocarbon here as your leader material. It is the best choice because it is going to reduce the fish seeing the line because of the almost invisible nature of the Trilene 100% fluorocarbon. As in any other type of fishing, staying organized is super important. That's why I like this little container because I always know where my fluorocarbon is and I can grab whatever I need very quickly. And if I'm getting low, I can see at a glance what needs replacing. So it's a handy little box made by Plano. This is a more realistic order of what a drop shot rig would look like. Now, this isn't done up yet, but just so you have a general overview before we begin. So this orange could represent your main line, which would typically be a braid or another piece of fluorocarbon. I'll explain more about that later when we get to the more advanced part of this video. You have your swivel here, and then you are going to have a piece of fluorocarbon come down. It's going to go through the hook eye of the Fusion 19 drop shot hook, and then it's going to continue down to the weight and you're going to tie the fluorocarbon in here and that's going to be your basic drop shot rig setup. Let's get our line ready to tie a drop shot rig. I am going to need some fluorocarbon for its abrasion resistance and low visibility. I'm going to take my swivel and I am going to do a Palomar knot. We have done these in the previous videos, so you just have to double it through and it, a little tricky because it's a pretty small swivel, but once you've got it through, it's just a matter of doing your overhand and pulling it through. I flip that up with my fingers and there's a bit of a peace sign there if you can see it. Snug it up and I'll wet that off camera for you. Take that and you are going to cut your tag and with your nail clippers, get that done. You're going to take it and do to maybe about four feet and you are going to snip it off from the spool. And there's a reason for that. My main line could be fluorocarbon or it could be braid. I will get more into that in the advanced section a little bit later. But let's say this is my main line and this is the material for the drop shot rig that I just tied with one Palomar knot here to the swivel. And now I have an opening in the swivel at the opposite end. So now I'm going to take my main line and go through and back through. And this is the second of four Palomar knots that you will use on your drop shot rig. You'll see the other two later. Now, take the Palomar knot, go under, pull that loop through, and that's basically what it looks like right there. You take the swivel and you pull it through. And the reason you cut it before is there's no spool on the end and it comes all the way through and there it is down there. And I leave enough so that I have room to tie it. I stick my thumb in the bottom loop, I flip the top loop up and I work to get that peace sign in there again and I snug it up. And as always, I'll wet that snip it. Once again, it's snipped. And now I have the main line up here. I have the swivel here. And I have my fluorocarbon here. 
about that four foot section and I'm still pulling it through. You see it's going to give me room to tie my hook on and still have some tag end left over for the weight. And that's basically two of the four Pelomar. This is the way you want the hook sitting on your line nice and horizontal like this. So in order to make this work, you have to take your line and go through the top. That is critical. Do not make the mistake of going through the bottom. Go through the top and take your tag end and go back up through the bottom. And now your line is doubled up. Keep your fingers in the loop so the hook doesn't slide off the end. And now take the tag end, which is loose here, and make sure you have enough to tie on the length of tag end you want. So I've got about a foot there, so that's pretty good. Now I take my line that's still doubled up, and once again, my fingers are in that loop to prevent the hook from falling off, and I do my Palomar knot and bring the hook through and I flip up that other loop out of the way and I try and make my peace sign work it down with my thumb once again I would normally wet it but I'm just trying to show you for demonstration purposes and tighten that up nice and snug that hook is tied on but it's not where you want it to be yet you have one more step Take your tag end again, and once you find the tag end, there it is, you are going to go through the top again, not the bottom, so both times through the top when you start it. You'll come back through the bottom just to do the Palomar knot. Take this now and snug it up and get that knot in the top. When you look at it now, you can see that that hook is standing out away from the line and that's what you want. Now you're going to bring the tag end and that is where your weight is going to go. I take my snap that I have and tie into that, which is gonna make it easier to change weights. And Palomar knot number four is coming, go through once, back through, once again, I keep my fingers in the loop to make sure that I have the distance that I want and just keep it free and clear there. So now I'm looking at, and I can measure out sort of roughly the distance I want. There's the hook and I'm going to bring it at about a foot. So now I take my weight and tie my Palomar knot. There's the loop, bring the weight through and flip that loop up, snug it up. Once again, wet it, cinch it off. Then you are going to take your, because you're using fluorocarbon nail clippers work really well. And there you have your drop shot rig. So basically what you have now is you have your weight that sits on the bottom, much like a live bait rig with the snap so you can change weights easily and effectively. And you come down with the weight sitting on the bottom. So the weight would be sitting here and you have the hook that is sitting out here. So you can see the hook is sitting out nice and horizontally and you put your bait on there, something like a Berkeley Maxent flatworm, which is super popular these days. And if you continued tracking up here towards the main line, I'm going to keep pulling and you're going to have a swivel, which is right there. And that swivel is going to prevent the bait from spinning, which is not going to look very natural to the fish and then the line continues up to the main line and that is your basic drop shot rig. Here we have a Berkeley Maxent flatworm and it's rigged up on the drop shot rig just to show you what it looks like in the water. The weight would be on the bottom, your snap 
the fluorocarbon, good abrasion resistance and hard to see. Your flatworm is out here, is standing out from the line. The hook is up and horizontal, which we mentioned was key. So make sure you follow the steps shown in the video as to how to tie your drop shot rig and you will be well on your way to catching some Great Lakes smallmouth and smallmouth all over the place as well as many other species of fish. When drop shotting don't be afraid to think outside the box. In the top max scent flatworm you can see it is nose hooked in the traditional style. In the second one a straight shanked hook is threaded along so that you hide the hook a little bit better. In the third case, you have a Fusion number one EWG hook, and you can fish this Texas rigged in different kinds of cover. And it would also work well for finesse fishing largemouth, not only just smallmouth bass. Also thinking outside the box, why not bigger baits, heavier line for largemouth with the bigger, say a three odd EWG fusion hook. There's all kinds of possibilities. What about if crappy are suspended up four feet off the bottom? Why not have a drop shot bait that is four feet off the bottom? And there are tons of possibilities. You've just got to let your creative juices go. Let's say you didn't have any snaps and yet you still wanted to be able to change weights quickly and easily without shortening up the tag end. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to take the line, and this is the tag end, and this is what my buddies Don and Lou prefer to do. And they are going to double up the line. So now there's basically a loop on the end. And there's various ways of making a loop knot, but we're going to do a triple surgeon's knot here. So we're going to wrap it around my fingers, and the loop end is still there. And I'm going to take that and go once, under, and out. And I'm going to take it and do another one so that it is now gone around that loop twice. And I said triple surgeon, so we're going to take that. And now we have the line, the double line wrapped around itself three times and we have a loop on the end. So now I'm gonna take that and I wanna get about an inch and a half, two inches, so I can work it with my thumb in the direction I want. So I'm looking at it now and I'm gonna say, okay, well, you know what, it's pretty close to two inches. And I can wet it. And now, that might be a little bigger than two inches, but it's gonna work. So now I take this and I have a tag end and I have my loop. So I can get my nail clippers and snip that off. Now with the loop, I just need to grab my weight and the weight has the eye that we like. I'm just gonna pinch the loop and get it to go through. And once it goes through, it's now hanging over. The reason you leave some extra line there is you can get your fingers into that loop and open it up. Now you take the weight and slide it through and then you simply pull on the line and now that weight is on there. The beauty of this setup though is that you can also take it off. So now you take that and you push it through and you get that weight back through and it's off and you can put another one on. And so that's a pretty cool twist to it. Here's a view of what a Lake Simcoe perch rig would look like. Weight, very similar if not the same to our small mouse setup with the snap. Probably about six inches to the first hook and it is a number four hook and then generally go up to 18 inches from the weight or about 12 inches from the first hook and another number four hook and once again we use the swivel to avoid line twist 
we also use four pound test instead of eight pound test as the perch are not as big and the lighter line is going to get you more bites. I'm going to tie a perch rig on four pound test now and a little further away so hopefully you get a better overview of how to do it and just dial it in a little bit more as I have to do two hooks for the perch rig. So I have my four pound test here and I have the swivel already attached and I'm ready to go. So I will just start getting to it and it takes some time as anything else. I go through the top, I'm just giving you a chance to see it. I go through the bottom and I'm going to have to bring this one up high because the perch rig I want to be about 18 inches or so. And so now I'm going to tie the Palomar knot and bring it through. I'm not going to worry too much about showing you how to tie the Palomar knot. You should have an idea from my first video. And now I have to find the tag end of this. So I'm looking for the tag end. It's obviously not the one with the swivel. I've got the tag in now. And there it is. And I go back through the top, just like I did with the smallmouth rig. And I'm going to snug it up and trying to get that number four hook to sit vertically, not sorry, not vertically, horizontally from the line. And that is the first hook in place. Go back to my tag end. And I want this one to be about 12 inches from the hook. So I go through the top, back through the bottom, doubling up the line. Now I am going to get it and measure it out so that there's approximately 12 inches, which there's about 12 inches. It doesn't have to be exact. You're perch fishing. They're not, they're not overly fussy most of the time. Now I do my Palomar knot again and snug that up. And wet it. I always wet your knots. You might have missed the first one, but make sure you do it and got the tag end and now I'm going to go back through the top once again I snug it up now you can see that it's sitting horizontally you can put your live bait or your plastic on there now I need to get my weight and there's my weight I'm going to do another palomar knot And I'm going to go back through. Once again, we are talking perch here. They're not super critical. However, I was, my goal was to get about six inches from the weight to the bottom hook and then about 18 inches to the top hook. So I make my Palomar knot and I bring the weight through and snug that up and wet it again. Snip off the tag end and that's it. It, it really isn't that difficult once you get it. So the weight is down here at the bottom again with the snap about eh, probably so there it is and probably have about eight inches there and following it down I have the next hook which is just kind of caught on the line a little bit there we go that's better and then to the swivel and that's it that's your perch rig Let's take a quick look at drop shot rods. For smallmouth, 
My first choice is a Fenwick World Class 7 foot 2 medium action extra fast. I am a big fan of size 40 reels. This is a Fluger Supreme XT in the 40 size. It is very advantageous for a lot of reasons and that's going to be the subject of another video. Also, I have a Berkley cinch on here which holds that drop shot weight firmly in place and it is a great all around. Medium action is good for getting a good hook set but you still have that extra fast tip to detect those light bites. So that is my choice for smallmouth fishing. For perch fishing, as we showed you the other rig, I go to a 6'9 medium light. I like the Fluger Supreme. And you'll notice that I had braid on both of my reels, whether it's for smallmouth or whether it's for perch. And I will typically use the green stealth the vast majority of the time, unless I want to line watch. And then I will go to a brighter color, such as a chartreuse or the white crystal fire line. But for my drop shotting, especially if I'm casting any long distances or dragging, then I want to have a green color. And you'll notice on my smallmouth rod that this green color here is a little darker than what's on my perch rod just because this is a little bit older and I don't worry quite as much about the the perch and the green line if it's starting to get a little bit older and faded it just uh, doesn't matter too much to me so I stick to a braid fluoro combination and the fluoro will go to the swivel and I very, very seldom when I am drop shotting ever tie direct from braid to my swivel. I just think it eliminates the number of bites you're going to get. So bear that in mind as you are picking your outfits. My perch rod is a Fenwick HMG and it is one of my all time favorite rods and it's great bang for the buck. Just remember with any of the rods, whether it's uh, low end or high end. The swivels that I use on my drop shot rigs should not go through the guides as they can do damage to the guide. So be careful there. Let's get to the more advanced section. So if my weight is on the bottom and I have my line up here and I have the swivel there as well, what is happening right now is the fish, if it's cruising around the bottom, it's only seeing fluorocarbon line here. And I could have up above here as my main line, I could have fluorocarbon or braid, and it probably really doesn't make any difference at this point. However, if I'm not fishing vertically and I now turn this so the bait is now coming through the water, you see now that if I have fluorocarbon up here, that that is going to be laying down close to the bottom and the fluorocarbon here is a huge advantage because the fish do not want to see a thick braid line that's very visible as it may turn them off striking what's down here because they're alerted that something is wrong up here. If you have this nice almost invisible fluorocarbon laying down low to the bottom, there's a better chance that you're going to get bit. So I would highly recommend that you, if you are making long casts or dragging bottom with a drop shot, that you use a long fluorocarbon leader, approximately 20 feet or so. And there's definite advantage to that. The braid to fluoro knot will be buried in when the fish is close to the boat. You'll get a better chance of landing the fish. And the longer the fluorocarbon is, the better chance you're going to have that the fish do not see it and get alerted that something's not quite right down there. So that's definitely a more advanced tip and make sure you're aware of that. If I have a bright gaudy colored braid here and my it's very close to my bait here, there's a really good chance I'm not going to get bit. Once again, vertical fishing doesn't really matter. If I'm fishing the Detroit River, for example, I would have my main line braid a bright gaudy color because I want to see it for any 
indications of a strike and then a, a short fluorocarbon leader down to my bait here. It doesn't have to be a drop shot, but you get the idea. Key, key thinking of how you're fishing and what the length of your fluorocarbon leader is and whether you're going to attach braid directly to the swivel or you're going to attach a fluorocarbon lead from your braid, so a braid to fluoro knot way up the line. I'm recommending about 20 feet. I know it sounds long, but trust me, it will work. And that is a, a much better way of doing it. Once again, if you are doing, you know, water that's dirty or off colored, then you might just tie your braid directly here and not have to worry about it because they're not gonna see the braid anyways. So keep that in mind as you are picking your setup for your drop shot rig. Here's another reason for a long lead. You can see that if the weight is down here and my hook is way up here, let's say this is 18 inches or so, then if I'm vertical fishing, then I'm targeting suspended fish that are up around above the bottom cruising around and that's all good. But let's say I decide to do some long casts or I want to just simply drag the bait with the wind. Now that hook that was 18 inches is going to start dropping down as the line is further away from the boat. And you can see now what was 18 inches before depending on the length of the line, it could be six inches off the bottom. So you need to keep in mind how you're fishing that drop shot bait. And if you are making long casts and dragging, then you need to use a long leader and keep in mind that that bait, as the line is further out, is going to be down near the bottom. So an important consideration to take into account. Don't forget. Here's my drop shot box. It's probably gonna surprise some of you, but it's basically just a little lunch box with four dividers in it. And you've probably seen these in a variety of grocery stores, Walmart, whatever the case may be. On the left side here, and again, labeling and organization is important. I have hook snap swivels and a variety of hook sizes to cover whatever drop shotting needs I have. And then I have weights as low as 1 32nd, 16th, 8th, 3 16th quarter, 3 8 half, 3 quarters, 1 ounce, and you can see CR, which is Carolina rigging. So I had a little extra space, so I figured it was somewhere I could just put the Carolina rig stuff. Plus, I have some heavier weights up to an ounce and a half for drop shotting, just on the outside chance I need them. For the majority of your job, drop shot purposes, you're gonna be using quarters, three eighths, and halves. And they will cover the majority of circumstances you'll need when you are drop shot. Let's just take a little peek inside the box so you get a better understanding. So as I said earlier, you can see that there are the four compartments in here. And these are just little craft bags you can get at the dollar store. And it's just a great way of keeping everything organized with minimizing the amount of space that it takes up inside. So if I need, for example, my, you know, three eighth ounce weights, they're labeled in there nice and neat and they're not all over the place and they stay together that way. And same with my weights over here. My bigger ones are looser. There's an example of one and a half ounce weight and I've got some beads and stuff for Carolina rigging. So. Just a quick peek inside my box. As you have seen in the making of a drop shot rig, it is time consuming and this factor can be complicated if it is rough on the water as you are trying to tie multiple Palomar knots and get your drop shot rig ready. If you are a tournament angler and you know that drop shotting is going to be the ticket for that event, it is a wise idea to tie multiple drop shot rigs ahead of time and you can see here that I have at the top left I have some shorter ones here that are approximately six inches and I label it and then medium about 12 inches and some mediums at the top and then some 18 inch ones here that gives you a variety of baits and you can also tie a variety of hook sizes on for different circumstances. If you are a guide, it's a great idea as well because it will give your clients more time to catch more fish.
my buddy Don Yerm is full of creative ideas and to make these pool noodles into drop shot holders he used a table saw and a quarter inch dado blade to notch out each of the sections for the drop shot pre-tied rig. All right, I wanted to show you how to store a drop shot rig onto the pool noodle. So you can see that the swivel, I have a pin with a little ball and it's just sliding up there. I'm going to take the pin and I am going to place it inside one of, sorry, let me place that inside one of the grooves and it's locked in there. And now I'm simply going to wrap this around and I'm eventually going to get to the hook. And there is the hook. I just take the hook, pull it a little tight so that there's a little tension and then bury the hook into the pool noodle. Just continue to wrap. And then when I get to the end there, the snap, I take another one of my little pins and I just put it into the hole of snap and put a little tension on it so that it loads up, locks in, and there it is stored. That's all there is to storing them on the pool. That's a wrap for the drop shotting second part of the series. I'm looking forward to doing a third part on the water this summer when bass season opens up here in Ontario. That should be exciting and I am really looking forward to that opportunity of sharing that with you. A very special thank you to all of you who have already subscribed to my channel. It's been growing and it's been an exciting journey and I encourage you to like, share, subscribe if you have not done so already. And once again, to those who already have, Thank you, thank you, thank you, and look forward to sharing more episodes with you in the near future.